I encourage my women and mothers to hold on when times are rough, speaking peace to their minds and souls when they feel they've had enough. I encourage my young ones also who sometimes are going through. I let them know that they are not alone and to believe what I say is true. So to my men on this morning, to my fathers, my faithful few, I also see your hurt, your pain, so I come to encourage you. Yes, I come to encourage you today to be all I've called you to be. To hold on to my every promise, even those right now you can't see. I come to encourage you, my fathers, who hold the weight of the world on you. I come to strengthen your hearts this morning, making all things in your life brand new. Yes, I come to encourage you, my warriors, for you have a charge you must keep. And you have a family that depends on you. That's why my face you continually see. For others, they don't really know your burdens and all that I expect. But I know you are more than able to complete the charge. That's why you're my chosen, my select. So encourage your own self this morning. And remember, I am by your side. And though the enemy is coming in like a flood right now, don't forget how in times past he has lied. That's why I come to encourage you today, reminding you you are my best. For despite all the temptations and cares of this world, you give me nothing less. So let me continue to use you, my fathers, be an example to all you meet, that other fathers will also come in. Yes, the enemy we will defeat. Oh, I'm proud of you, my soldiers, for holding on through the rain and for standing strong, obeying my voice, even through your pain. Oh, yes, I could have spoken to others this morning, because I love all my children, that's true. But this is your day, your time to shine. So I come to encourage you. Amen, amen. We thank God for the poem this morning. I come to encourage you, amen. Now at this time, we're gonna call for our Solomon Temple praise dancers. Will you please put your hands together as they come. Forgiving me over and over again, yeah. I'm calling on you, Heavenly Father. I'm down on my knees. Say, I call on you no matter the hour. Lord, I'm in need. I've been messing up, done lost my house, done lost my job. Why walking out? These church folks say they friends but i'm all they talk about i've been doing wrong i'm so sorry lord please forgive me we confess to him he'll remove all wickedness the blood from your son will wash me
been smoking a lot and drinking a lot and all up in the club. I've been doing this, I've been doing that, and I had no business doing it. No church or no Bible study ain't been in my word. Now I know better than this. Can't live my life in sin. We confess to
right, you can clap your hands. church and I know it ain't a church that is it because I see all these people out here. Now everybody got something going on in their life but you got to know and believe that it's going to be all right. Now how many of y'all really believe that it's going to be all right? Put your hands together. Y'all better wake up in here. It's gonna be alright. It's gonna be alright. 
a female. And she's not changing. My mother said, no, she, uh, God made a, f a female, and that's what she's going to be. Praise God. So we're going to pray. Father, we thank you. We pray for Sister Willis all the way in Texas. And we thank you, God, for your word you've given her, a word that you've given all of us. You made the male and female and nothing in between. So we pray and bind the spirit in the name of Jesus. We say, God, touch her heart and touch her mind. Touch her spirit and deliver her and set her free. Give mama peace and know that it's done even as we pray. We thank you, God, you're going to turn her steps another way. You're going to bring deliverance to this child's life and body. And we bind Satan that would hinder now. In the name of Jesus, we call it done. And we thank you for the victory in Jesus' name. Give God a praise for the victory. And let her know we're praying with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can the church say amen? Praise God. All right, Sister Bones, God bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. We know that it is Father's Day this morning. Amen. Put your hands together for all the fathers. Amen. We celebrate, celebrate, celebrate the men this morning. Amen. Amen. You can take your seats for a moment. We now want to take a, a brief space in the service to celebrate. Amen. Our men. So we ask all of the fathers, all of the fathers. Thank you enough. Uh, it takes a man to be a father. And it takes God to help him to be molded and made to be a father. Because a lot of times we as men don't know how to be a father. I ain't talking about a husband don't know how to be a father either. So God had to help us and teach us what it is. And we have great women that's with us. So I, can be, I couldn't be a real good father without a great woman. First lady, let God bless her. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. It's just, it's just working together. And doing what God has called us to do in the body of Christ. We, so we thank God for you, every one of you. Praise God. Now at this time, we, I guess we're getting ready to get into the word, right? Anything else? That's it. Praise God. All right. Well, today, this is Father's Day, and we want to say God bless all the men. And on Mother's Day, I, I brought the word, praise God. On Mother's Day, I brought the word, praise God. And so on Father's Day, Guess what? The fragrance of the house gonna bring the word today. Give God a praise, first lady. Praise God. Co-pastor. Come on here, first lady elect. The fragrance of the house. Prophetess Linda D. Holloway. Give God a praise as she comes. Thank you. Now let's give God a hand praise. Come on, let's thank the Lord. We truly thank God. Thank God for the man of God giving me space to do this. Amen. That lets me know that he, he trusts and believes in what I say. Amen. And he see my growth as well. So let's join hands. Well, why don't you look at a man and tell them Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. And you know what I've learned too? Sometimes the women have to be that mother and father. So tell them Happy Father's Day too. Isn't that right? To all the single moms, single mom slash dad, amen, let us pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for another day, God, a beautiful, wonderful day you have made, and we truly rejoice, and we're glad they're in, God. Touch every member that is here to hear the word, those that didn't take them safe wherever they are with their loved ones, God. Touch right now, God. Touch the Gladney family and his passing, Lord. Strengthen that family right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Touch Mom Holloway, Lord Jesus, as she lay on the bed, God. We know her time has come, and we ask you to receive this woman of God, this wonderful mother, hallelujah, into your bosom, Jesus. And we thank you for that. Strengthen our bishop, God, and his brothers and sisters and the entire family, God, as we wait on you, God, in the name of Jesus. Touch our body, touch our mind. Give strength where strength needs to be given, God. And we thank you for it now. And then any loved one, God, that is hurt in pain or sick, even to our own selves, touch us right now. In the name of Jesus. You told us if we ask you, it shall be done. You told us if we seek you, we'll find you. And you told us if we knock the door, it's going to be open. So we're doing all three this morning, Lord, for our bodies, Lord spiritually physically and financially we give you the glory 
anoint your word this morning. Anoint me, God, to tell the truth, God, which is in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. I'm so happy for Jesus. Aren't you? Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm happy to see you this morning. And really mean it. Amen. We got to love right in the church, y'all. Come on. We got to get it right. Before I bring the word, I'm going to ask Sister Brenda Jones to come. She had a dream, uh, not a dream, a visitation from the Lord this morning. And she had called the bishop and I like at 5, 530 this morning. Amen. The Lord, Spirit of the Lord was on her heavily, but she was able to call back and say what the Lord had given her. So I want Brenda, Sister Brenda, amen, to come and just share briefly with us, amen, what the Lord had given her. Amen. Praise the Lord for this woman of God. Amen. First, I want to give an order to my bishop, to go Holloway and her places. I usually pray between 2 and 4 o'clock every morning. I have a verse in the daytime, the Lord give me a scripture for at night. About a couple of weeks ago, I was praying, I was praying, I was praying, and the Lord just had me shouting on my back in my sleep. And I thought I was dreaming, I was dreaming, I just kept praising the Lord, praising the Lord. So I just kept on and letting it go. So when I woke up this morning, I was praying, again between 2 and 4 o'clock, I was laying in my bed, and I thought I was dreaming. And God lift me up out of my bed and knock me on the floor. I was speaking in tongue that I have never spoken tongue in my life like that before. And I have been fasting and praying. And so the Lord has showed me I was dressed in all white, just all white. And I was in this building. It was like a tower. The tower had a lot of steps and a lot of openings, a lot of steps and a lot of openings. And I just kept on praising the Lord. I tried to speak English, but I couldn't. And God told me, I want you to see what I see, and I want you to say what I say. And I was laying hands and praying for a lot of people, just a lot of people. God showed me faces of people that was right and some faces I did not see. And God said, this is this. And this is that. So be it. If you're not living right, you are that. And he said, everybody been coming to church, come to church. You think the person, the most person, is holy and doing that, but we never know. God said they're coming to church pretending like they say it with the Holy Ghost. When you leave out that seat and somebody else sit there, they're collecting your spirit. Nothing but spirit. Spirits. And I kept, I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I couldn't say it. I could say nothing. I kept crawling. I kept crawling. My, my grandbaby, she was in the bed with me. The Lord never let her wake up. My two grandsons was in the room with TJ. They never woke up. I hit that float and I crawled and God just dragged me from one end of the house to the other house, from door to door. I said, Lord, what is it? And Lord said, continue to be a good vessel because when it's time for you to live right they're going to come running and the ones come running going to be that and the one that stay flat on their feet will be this so I'm telling you saints all this plan God said it will be that no one knows they are the hour but I thank God for loving me so much to come in my life to put the anointing on me to show me what he see and to speak what he says. And be careful where you sit. Pray, pray. These spirits are real. You don't know why some people are acting up. Somebody left some spirits on the seats. And when you come to church, you need to pray, you need to fast, you need to be ready. This is what the Lord says. And I thank you. Thank you. Bless you. Amen. So God will use any of us, amen. amen, amen, to bring the word to the body of Christ, amen. amen. Thank God for her obedience, amen. amen, because God will use us. This morning, the word of God that God gave me, 
Amen. You all know I'm not a lone speaker. Amen. But I ask God for the anointing. And I pray you all are listening. Amen. And your heart is open and ready for the word. Amen. This word this morning is finally, brethren, be strong. Finally, at the end of the day, I'm just saying, you know, all them terms we use, ain't nobody got time for this. When you get through, finally, the last call is to be strong. Amen. Finally, brethren, be strong. We're going to Ephesians, the sixth chapter, the first through the 18th verse. That's all you got to write down. Are y'all ready for the word? All right. Ephesians 6, 1 through 18. I didn't come to bash men or any of that. I didn't come to say, you know, you all don't help us wash dishes. I didn't come to talk about that. I didn't, talk, I didn't come to talk about how you don't help vacuum the floor. I didn't come to, to, to say when you can't find nothing, you blame everybody else because you can't find it. I didn't come to talk about that. And then we go find it for you and give it to you because if it had teeth, it would have bit you. I didn't come to talk about that. I just come to tell you to be strong. Amen. So we're going to leave all that other alone, all right? Amen. Finally, brethren, be strong. And I have to refer to our sisters as well because you have a dual role. You're doing the father and the mother figure. And God bless our single women and mothers that do that, right? Let's give them a hand too, amen? Because that means you're holding your household together. All right? We're going to start reading as Ephesians 6, chapter, starting with the first verse. Sister Haman. Mm -hmm. For this is right. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is what? Right. right. Paul was talking to the believers in the Christian faith, and he was encouraging them, amen, being in Ephesus. I believe that's the right way to say it. Amen, in Ephesus. Strengthening the believers in Christ. So the Bible wouldn't be totally if it don't cover the total man. So even to our children, we're to obey our parents and the Lord, which is right. When we go back to our fathers, our fathers were once sons. Come on. And our mothers were once daughters. You know, sometimes our children feel like we just stepped out in space. We didn't have no growing process. And then when we tell them something, they think we're old and we don't know what we're talking about. They think daddy is off or mama is off. She don't know what she's saying. But you know what? It ain't number one cycle. It goes around and around. You've heard the cliche, what goes around comes around. Isn't that right? Amen. So it said, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. So when we look at the believers, there are men that are sitting here today. Amen. One thing we were taught, all of those are old school. If you just entered into the world, we can go all the way back to 20s, 30s, 40s. We taught our children to obey us. And we had to be obedient. When mama said something, it went. Isn't that right? What they call child abuse now wasn't nothing but a, a whooping. Amen for us. But we want to call 911. Amen, somebody. If you ain't been whooped, you can keep your lips tight. But baby, I mean the old school parents. Amen. They were disciplined. And we were taught to respect and obey mama and daddy. And not only mom and daddy, the school teacher, the next door neighbor, your auntie and uncle, and one another. We wasn't taught to fight each other even in the same household. Come on, you ain't talking. We dared not fight each other. Because one thing about a mama will end up everybody and everybody got whooped. And then when you got through with that, if mama told daddy about it, you were in for another beating. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. So children, obey your parents in the Lord. Meaning that those of us that are believers and love God, we are special parents. And it's right for you to obey. It's right for your daddy to make you obey him and respect your mom and obey her. It's right for your mama to teach you to obey the father and respect and obey him. Amen. 
Read the second one. Honor thy father and mother, uh -huh. which is the first commandment with promise. I like that. It said honor. honor. That's it. That's it. honor. honor. Uh -huh. Thy father and the mother. Uh -huh. So just like we're not supposed to, help, supposed to help pick and choose us, guess what? Neither are you. Right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. So what is that promise? Read the third verse. That it may be well with thee, uh -huh. and thou mayest live long on the earth. Oh, my God. So if you honor your mother and father, God said it's going to be how with you? So if you're living today, and everything is well, regardless of the rips and the dips and the whatever, is well with you because you honored your mother and father. And then the Bible says he told them that God's going to give us what kind of life? A long life. Don't you want that? Amen. Amen. I see my grandkids, but I want to see my great-grandkids. I want to see them graduate. I want to see them make something out of themselves. Come on. That's long life. Amen. And I want to be able to be in my right mind to know who they are. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. A long life. All right? And then the fourth verse says, And ye fathers, uh -huh. provoke not your children to wrath. Mm -hmm. But bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And you fathers, provoke not. In other words, don't vex them. Don't make them angry. Don't make them sin. Amen. Learn how to talk to your sons and your daughters. Be interested. I ain't going to say play like you're interested in what they're saying. Be interested in what they're saying. Yeah, they have an opinion. And it's okay. But when they get through, correct them. Amen. Sometimes you know how we get, I don't want to hear it, gone. I don't want to hear it. You need to hear it. Because you need to know what's going on in their mind. Because if you don't tell them, somebody else going to tell them. So why don't you go ahead and tell them so they can go and live right according to the word of God. Amen? So we don't provoke our children to anger. We shouldn't vex our children. Every time they get ready to sit down, I need Kia and say that. Bring me a drink of water. They get up, they get you the water. They go sit down. Bring me a cracker. Get up, they go get the cracker. They come back and sit down. Bring me the remote. They get up. Come on now. We do that. I tell them myself. <laughs> we do that. And sometimes I have to remember and go, oh, you know what? Thank you, baby. That's all mama needs. So we don't want to do that to our children. Amen. But we want to love them and treat them good and treat them right. But don't get me wrong, children, you should be able to do it too. Uh-huh. Don't act like you don't want to bring me no water. And I'm clothing and feeding and, and doctoring and sitting up and doing homework and cooking. Come on, somebody. Don't act like you don't want to bring me no water. Ice mountain and anything else. All right, somebody. So we don't want to provoke our children. We don't want to push them to do wrong. That's why it's good to listen to them. Let them explain their little selves. They ain't got all the wisdom and knowledge. When they get through, they still need us. They still need our guidance. And it's amazing because the, the mistakes we made, we don't want them to make them. They don't understand why they, they right here, we're right there. We're always ahead of them because we've been there, done that. Amen. So we don't provoke them. We bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of God, meaning that nurture, meaning to help them develop, to nurture them, to make sure they're doing the right thing. You got to do your homework. You got to study for your test. Come on, men. We need you. We need you fathers to tell them that too to nurture them, to get under what mama done said and make sure, sit down and listen to them, take them over and over and over again, amen? And um, admonition means to advise in the warning of the Lord. Let them know that if you don't do right, God see you. I can't be with you 24 hours a day, but when I pray that prayer of faith for God to watch over you, and when you leave out of my presence, I believe the angels are going with our children. Amen, somebody. And you know what? They, uh, the, the angel will let you know that something happened at school before they even get back to you. Y'all need James Jr. to tell you that. He walk in the house sometime and I'll say, okay, what happened at school today? He stopped, 
automatically that's a giveaway right there. Because he stopped dead in his tracks. And then he go, what, what the Lord tell you? No. You tell me. Dead giveaway. I do key on the same way. Pick him up from school. How'd it go today? He went fine and he looking straight ahead. Oh yeah, well, um, you sure now? You ain't got nothing to tell me before I go there? Dead giveaway. So we believe in sending our children to school even with prayer fathers. Let's pray over our children. Pray over them before they go to bed. Learn how to hug your sons and embrace your daughter. Amen. Nothing funny going on. Ain't nothing wrong with a man hugging a, a young man. Ain't that right? I don't know about y'all, but we had what's called a studio couch. And me and my sister slept at one end and my brother slept in the other. And nobody touched each other. Come on, yeah, yeah. Nobody. It's good. Hugs are good. Amen. It strengthens us. Amen. Go to the next verse, please. Servants, uh -huh. be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling. In singleness of your heart, as unto Christ. All right? So servants, those of us that have jobs, amen? Fathers, mothers, be obedient to your master, which is your boss, or your supervisor, or even our pastor, amen? amen. Those that have authority over you. Those uh, th that have authority over you, servants, be obedient to them, or your master, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling. Not that you're supposed to be scared of the person. But it just shows respect that you're there to do your job. Amen. So fearing God and being subject to authority. Read the next verse. Not with eye service uh -huh. as men pleasers, right. but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Not with eye service. And you know what they're talking about right there, eye service? Watching the supervisor, see if he's watching you. Because you're trying to get away from, with something. He go, he'll go around the, the corner and you lay back off your job. You just stop. He come around the corner and you get busy. That's because you're watching when you should be working. Isn't God a balanced God? So our, our spiritual life and our natural life have to be balanced. We can't do everything, uh, hallelujah, hallelujah, in the spirit and want to be right and live like, like sin. Uh, in our natural life, it don't mix, saints. We have to be balanced. Amen. 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 Go to the next verse. With goodwill, uh -huh. doing service as to the Lord and not to men. With goodwill as to who? The Lord and not to men. So in other words, yeah, you're on there. You, you're working with the supervisor, with the boss or whatever to earn a paycheck. But we still have to do right. Amen. We still have to do right, not with jealousy, not with strife. If you feel that way about your job, don't go. Quit. Find something else. Start your own business. I know no supervisor want any hard-headed employee that you have to pull teeth every time they come to work. Amen. So even at that, we have to line up with the word, and let's be a good employee. And if you're an employer, be a good employer. We have to treat each other right. Amen. I mean, this is covering everything. Okay, the seventh verse. Did we do that? Eighth yes. verse, okay. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, uh -huh. the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bound or free. Okay, for what, whatsoever. So whatever good you do to others is going to come back to you. Whether they saved or unsaved, it's coming back. Amen. So whether you do it to a saved man or unsaved man, but we shouldn't have a discrepancy of who saved and unsaved, who you like and who you don't like. We're supposed to love everybody and do right. Amen. All right, ninth verse. Ye and ye masters, do the same things unto them. Yes. For bearing threatening, mm -hmm. knowing that your master also is in heaven, mm -hmm. neither is there respect of persons with him. Amen. So even to your boss or your pastor or your supervisor, they have to do right to you because they're accountable to God as well. So we can't be 
uh, tyrants or beat people down if you're in a supervisory position. You should be the most loving person that they know. We should treat people right, regardless of how they, they treat us. And I know that for some of us, that's a hard pill to swallow. But if you pray and stay before God, I'm here to tell you, it can be done. Did not the word say, I'll make your enemies your footstool? Well, then God's word is right. And if you pray the word and live the word and walk the word and talk the word, don't tell me God won't work things out for you. Yes, he will. So even as you as supervisor or whatever on your job, you have to treat people right. I know sometimes we hate to see people coming because they're all about trouble or they're all about woe and doom, but you still got to treat them right. Learn how to call their name out in prayer and pray for them. Amen. That's our job. Okay, 10th verse. Finally, my brother. Finally, my brother. Be strong in the Lord. Yeah. And in the power of his might. Finally, at the end of everything going on in that day, out of everything that people treat you the way they treat you, be strong, my brother. Be strong through all the heartache. Be strong through the up and down. Be strong through the rain and the storm. Be strong. Amen. Finally, when everything is done and at the end of the day, it's a warning to us and an encouragement at the same time to be strong. Amen. Strong through the persecution and all those things. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Read. Put on the whole armor of God. Put on half the armor. The whole armor of God. You got to know what the whole armor is. You don't get dressed in the morning and don't put your shoes on. You don't get dressed in the morning and don't comb your hair. You have to put on a complete outfit, isn't that right? Okay, put on the whole armor of God. Why? That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. What are the wiles of the devil? The lie. The slander, the treachery, yes, deceitfulness, backbiting, temptation to sin, yes, discouragement, anything and everything he can throw at you, that's the wiles of the devil. He get all in your mind, make you not do things, and the things that you should do, you won't do, and things you, that you're not supposed to do, you find that you do, isn't that right? The wiles of the devil. Go on. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, uh -huh. but against principalities, mm -hmm. against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Principalities is a ruled territory that is ruled by witches and, and people in high places that are evil in heart. Amen. And it says... Uh, this is not fleshly thing. See, we always want to fight flesh with flesh. But it's not fleshly, amen? You have to pray, pray for the spirit within a person. Like Sister Brenda was saying, the spirit that are left behind. That's why you need to be spirit-filled that when somebody come behind you, you should be able to feel it. When, I, when we're up here and we're shouting and praising the Lord, and if Minister Yates start uh, uh, praising God, don't you know we all feel that spirit sitting up on this pulpit? If the spirit is right, it'll travel from place to place, person to person. That's why it'll jump up on this side next to somebody running on that side, somebody running in the back because the spirit is moving. So we have to have the right spirit and know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Amen, somebody. 13th verse. Wherefore, uh -huh. take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Take on the whole armor of God. So knowing, Father, that this is all going on, you got to take on the whole armor, and we're going to talk about the armor. Not some of it, not half of it, but all of it. And I'm sure that in each one of our lives, there are situations, some situations you just don't want to deal with. Isn't that right? 
that sometimes you say, no, I'm not, I'm not going to even deal with that. I'm not going to even entertain it. But if you put that whole armor on, you'll be saying, okay, bring it on. I got something for it. But you got to deal with it in order to pass the test. Amen, somebody. And when you're done, you done put it on all the armor, then you, all you need to do is what? Stand. Go on, 14th verse. Stand therefore, uh -huh. having your loins girt about with truth, uh -huh. and having on the breastplate of righteousness. All right. Stand. Don't sit down. Don't squat. Don't lean. Just stand. Having your loins girt about you with what? With truth. Okay, read the next one. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Uh -huh. Above all, taking the shield of faith, mm -hmm. wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery dart of the wicked. And you know, it, what I like about this, God has told us what to do. Amen. If we just take heed, saints, and really put it in our heart, we can do this. Amen. We think it's difficult. It's only difficult because you won't believe the word. And if you don't read the word, you ain't going to know the word. You're not going to know how to handle silly problems, amen, and the strong ones when the enemy come up against us. It said, take the shield of faith. So no matter what the devil send your way, your faith will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. All right, 17 verse. And take the helmet of salvation mm -hmm. and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. The word of God. Yeah. From Genesis to Revelation, yeah. every answer that you need to every problem is in this word. Yeah. That's the only way you're going to find it. We have to hide the word of God in our heart that we might not what? Yeah. Sin against him. Yeah. So if we know the word and we put it in our heart, God will help us. Amen? Yeah. All right, read the 18th verse. Praying always uh -huh. with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance yes. and supplications for all saints. Praying always in the spirit. Yes. Always in the spirit. Yes. Like Sister Brenda was saying, praying always in the spirit. That means early in the morning. I'm not saying walk around like a zombie. Yeah. If somebody trying to talk to you, I'm praying right now. No, that's not what we say. But you can pray when you're driving down the street. Almost had an accident. I told you, when I pull out of my garage every morning, I ask the Lord to dispatch your angels all around my car. And I feel like I be driving on the wings of faith. I feel an angel on the right side. I feel an angel on the left side. I feel an angel around my bumpers. Come on, somebody. And when I get to an intersection, when I had the green light and they had the red one, and they almost hit me, but they didn't. Because I pray. Because I ask God. And then I get in the store. I always tell the Lord, show me and give me a boy. Oh, y'all, 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 yeah, yeah. Bless me today, Lord. Whether I find some money or whether you find something you like on sale, you're supposed to pray. Amen, somebody. You pray as you go. Just pray. You got prayer on your mind. Not that you're so spiritually that you're dumb, but we have to pray always. And that's all day long. I mean, over in the midnight hour, whether I turn over, whatever, I hear Bishop. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord. I'm so glad for that. I ain't got no demons chasing me in my sleep. Because God said the saint's sleep is supposed to be sweet. Amen. So we have to always pray. So finally, brother, be strong. Amen. And to be strong, you got to put on the whole armor of God. Going back to the 14th uh, verse, we're talking about putting on the armor. Yes. 11 verse, put on the whole armor of God, you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. All uh, right, wherefore, take on the whole armor of God, you may be standing there. Stand there for the 14th verse. I was right the first time. Stand, therefore, 
having your loins girt about with what? Satan of fight us with lies. And sometimes his lies sound like the truth. But only believers have God's truth, which can defeat Satan's lies. So that's why you have to have your loins girt about you with truth. And then it's go on and say, you got to put on the breastplate of righteousness. Because Satan often attacks our heart. And our heart is the seat of our emotions. The Bible says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. So whatever is in you is going to come up out of you. If it's wrong, if it's nasty, if it's dirty, if it's in you, it's coming out. So Satan will attack our heart, which is the seat of our emotions, the self-worth and trust. God's righteousness is the breastplate that protects our heart and ensures his approval. He approves of us because he loves us and he sent his son to die for us. So we gotta put on the whole armor and then we gotta put on uh, the, our shoes. Uh, uh, the, our feet gotta be shod with the, uh, with the gospel of peace, amen. He gotta be ready to spread the good news. Uh, that's why I say you can't get dressed and ain't got no shoes on your feet. Because you got to run, hallelujah, to spread the good news about Jesus. Satan wants us to think that telling others the good news is a worthless and hopeless task. But the size of the task is too big and too negative. But it don't matter what size the task is. You got to know that if you're talking about Jesus, it fits just right. Come on, somebody. And then we got to put on the shield of faith. What we see are Satan's attacks in forms of insults. Somebody want to insult you. Oh, here she come with a saved and sanctified self. Hear that brother come. He don't never say nothing. He just smile and always want to talk about the Lord. You know what? I wouldn't let them discourage me not one bit. Because one day, hey, 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 one day, we all got to know him in a pardon of our sin. So you got to put on that shield of faith that you'll believe God for everything and anything. That before anything happens, your faith walks and talks. Your faith will enter into the room before you even get there. Amen. I believe in one thing that children of God, when we walk in a place, we're supposed to change the atmosphere. Where there's doubt, we come in with hope. Where there's sorrow, we come in with joy. Come on, somebody. Those that are bound, we come in letting them know that the captives can go free this today. Then the helmet of salvation. Satan wants us to doubt God. Jesus and our salvation. You hear me? I mean, he, he just want to wipe us out. Totally out. The helmet protects our mind and our doubting. And it keeps us saved and doing the work for the Lord. So we got to put on the helmet. And then the sword, which is the word of God. The sword is the only weapon of offense in this list of armor. If we ain't got no word, you're not going to make it. Ta-ta ain't going to get it. ta ba ba salad ain't going to get it. You got to know this word. You got to speak the word. When you're done all, you got to stand. These are times when we need to take the offensive against Satan. When we are tempted, we need to trust in the truth of God's word. So when, it's, when the devil tells you you can't have something, say, no, no, no. That's not what the word say. The word say, whatsoever I desire when I pray, that if I believe it, I can have it. Ain't that right? Hey, I, I'm sick and my body hurts. I don't feel good this morning. Well, the word tell me that by his stripes I'm healed. Oh, come on, somebody. I couldn't pay my bills last week. Uh, all of my money ran out. Uh, I didn't know how I was going to pay electric. I didn't know what to do with the green gas. But God told me that he would give into my bosom. He would cause men. Uh, he'll cause men to come and pay your bill. Come on, somebody. Oh, oh. Hey, hey. If
if we stand firm in the word and we really apply the word to our life, uh, we can get through any and all situations. No matter how bad it may look, uh, God will turn it around for your good. Yes, he will. Oh, yes, he will. Oh, my God. So I just stopped by the day to tell you, fathers, to be strong. Don't let go. Those of you that are doing the mother and the father role, be strong. Don't let go. Stay with the word. The word will help you. The word will strengthen you. The word will deliver you. In the name of Jesus. I don't know what's wrong with our sister. Point your hands that way. Touch her right now, God. Strengthen her right now. Help her right now. Whatever she's going through in her body, you see her praying? Every step of the way, my sister. Yeah, heal, Lord. Heal, Lord. Heal, Lord. Yeah. Bless your name, Jesus. Come on and bless your name, Jesus. Come on and bless your name, Jesus. Come on and bless your name, Jesus. Be strong in the Lord. They might have told you no, but God says yes. Man can close one door, God will open up another door. He'll bring the low places high. He'll take the light places low. He'll bring darkness into light. Oh yes, he will. Bless your name, Jesus. Come on and let's bless the Lord. Stand. When you've done all, just stand. Be strong in the Lord. Finally, at the end of the day, when you take your shoes off and get ready to lay your head up on your pillow, know that you've done what God told you to do. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Come on and let's bless the Lord. Bless you, hallelujah. Come on and bless him. Bless you, Jesus. And I'm gonna ask all of our fathers if you would stand, all of the men. And we're gonna pray with our men that God will strengthen you all where you stand. Amen, lift your hands, fathers. You all have done good work, amen. Sometimes we choose the wrong mate or however it would be. Had kids out of wedlock or however it would be. That's the reality. It's not to put nobody down. But you're still a man. You're still a father. You're still a father. And when you have your heart of your children in your heart, and they'll be in your heart, which we bring them to God's heart, it can't go wrong. Amen, somebody. Maybe not all the times as wives, we don't tell you how good you are. Amen. But you got to know it for yourself. That when you line up with the word of God and ask God, teach me how to be a man. Teach me how to be a father. More than anything, teach me how to be a child of God. God would do just that. So I ask you to raise your hands right now and stretch them to heaven. Like Bishop said, like you under arrest. Father, in the name of Jesus, to every precious man that would stand right now, that would take on fatherhood, that you would touch and strengthen our brothers in this assembly, God. You would strengthen them to be the man of God that you want them to be. That they will undergird the things that they need to do in their household, with their children, with their wives, with on their jobs, whatever they need to do, that they would get in this word, God, and they will fall up on their knees and cry out unto you, Jesus. Help them to embrace the son. Help them to embrace the daughter. In the name of Jesus, 
that they would strengthen and encourage them, Lord, to have a kind word to say, a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, and a word of understanding. Do it for these wonderful fathers, and we thank you for this day that we can celebrate and appreciate them in the name of Jesus. We call it done. Save souls. Save souls. Save their soul. Don't let them be lost. In Jesus' name we pray. And let every heart say, Amen. Come on, let's celebrate our dad. Amen. You may be seated. So again, that's what the Lord gave me. Just to encourage you to stand. And when you've done all, because I've been in that place, they should have said, just maintain. Just stand there. And I said, but I am doing it. He said, well, keep on doing it. There is no defense for the truth. There's nothing else to say. But say what the words say, amen. So again, we thank you for being here this morning. We thank you for God, our point of his spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Thank you for staying. Amen. And now at this time, would you raise your hand for a radio broadcast envelope?